actually work some stuff from top of half the card to that. I don't know how familiar you guys are with it, but I'm not getting really deep into it. I'm not really going into passes or submissions. We're just going to work some concepts on how to control and just kind of see where it goes from there. So, uh, what's your in a general consensus? What's your familiarity or your your game from half bar? You guys all familiar with it, or you guys don't talk very much? Man. I hate it. Live it up. I know it's early. Come on, man. Uh, so, just a little bit. Nobody here is like. Uh, a guru on it, you guys, nothing? Got nothing for me? I mean, you guys, your familiarity, are you, are you, 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 you like the half, bottom of the half guard? And, okay, so we're, we're going to just work some concepts from the top, and we'll just see where it goes from there, based on how you guys are feeling, what kind of questions come up, and whatever. Um, I need somebody, anybody. Somebody? Yeller. All right, so uh, I am kind of lazy when it comes to jiu-jitsu, so I, I try and accomplish what I'm going to try to accomplish with as little energy as possible. So depending on what my guy's doing for the bottom of the half guard, I have a tendency to start off in this position right here, even though I know this gives him an advantage because he's, he's getting his underhook on me, he's getting in this position where he needs to start working the sweeps. Okay, so what I'm going to have you guys do is we're going to start working from breaking down your opponent and flattening him out, right? Because uh, if my guy's on his hip, or if he's sitting up, or if he's in any position where he's got this underhook on me, where he can start to work my arm out into my back, start working my, his sweeps on me and stuff, it's, it's not beneficial for me, right? So, um, for my benefit, if he's on his back, the, the flatter he is, the less movement he has, the better chances I have of getting my leg free if I'm choosing to pass, or if I'm looking to set up a, you know, a submission from here, or whatever, I can do that. So, regardless of what he's doing, I want to get him flat, right? So if he gets his underhook on me and he gets high, I need to flatten him out, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is just swim back for my underhook, right? So now I can reach for his arm and bring him down, or I can just not let him get that high in the first place and start working cross faces and whatnot. So, just turn to it a little bit. So if it gets to a point where I can let him get this high on me, I need to use my weight, right? So I'm coming inside on him. Okay, he's going to keep posting back. Keep posting back. And I'm just going to keep my weight, right? So. We start from this position here, okay? So the guy in the bottom is going to start sitting up and going for an underhook. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swim back for my underhook. Okay, from here, I'm just going to drive my weight forward and shoot for his arm, flatten him out. Now he's not going to accept that, and he's going to try and start hipping out on me. And I'm going to work. I'm just going to, so don't go away. I'm just going to work my cross face and work to this position here, okay? He's still in a position to move. So what I want to do from this position is just drive his arm up, and I want to hook his armpit, okay? It might be gross, but hook his armpit. And if I want to get his head to his, I want his head going in that direction, okay? If you have a gi on, let me try my gi first real quick. Someone with a gi, real quick. Don't go too far in. So I got a guy with a gi. From here, I'm working my under, uh, I'm working my far side under hook, and I like to work the cross face to get him flat. Once I do that, I go to the top of his shoulder. Can you guys all see what I'm doing? So just stay fine for a second. I'm going underhook, and I'm grabbing his material on top. Okay? So I'm underhook, I'm coming here, I'm grabbing, I'm driving his face in. Okay? This gives me my opportunity to control him because he has to, to hip out. To hip out, he needs to turn and face me. Okay? If I could control this, hip out. Figures. <laughs> if I could get a grip on this, okay. Okay, it's hard for him to move. Okay, and you notice what's happening this whole time? He's moving his legs, right? So if I could control him with just one arm, and he starts hipping out, it's not hard for me to go and get my knee high, right? In order to pass, all I need to do is get my knee this high. Do I drop this leg flat? Once my knee is past his hips, my passes become really easy, okay? So I want to just control him to the point where he stops thinking about what's going on up here and opens his legs to start moving so I can just get my knee high enough just to do one of my passes, right? So he starts working up for his underhook. I'm briefly issuing for my underhook, going high, pinning him. And then I just start working my, my knee out, okay? So for the gi people, so for the gi people, 
start off. You're in this position. He's going to start working and he's going to start moving really slow. Let the guy in the top get what he wants. The guy in the bottom, I just want you to move just to let the guy on top have to flatten you out again, right? He starts going for the underhook, I'm going through. Flatten. Going for my underhook in his head. Coming up, grabbing, and pinning his head through. Okay? From here, I want to hold him and get out. If all that's happening, that gets real easy. Okay? And then we're going to stop. But that's, so that's going to be the drill. So for Nogi, guys, it's going to be a little harder because you don't have the key to grip onto, right? So I flatten him out. As I underhook, I'm going to the armpit. Okay? With the armpit, sorry about this, dude. <laughs> My, my string is hanging right now. <laughs> so when I get to the armpit, it's a little bit harder because for me because it's easier for him to, to start moving from here because all he has to really do is start moving his arm and get technically get free. So I need to try and get it close to his arm. Okay, now as he starts you know, as he starts moving now, my knee is up. Okay? So all we're gonna work on is getting control in that position. How much shoulder pressure are you? <laughs> and then, when you, then when I actually do the pass, it gets worse. So um, I'll let you feel. I'll lower by in a minute. So I'm fishing for my underhook, right? So you guys can start however you want. Okay? He, he's hooking up. This is his position here, right? It's up to me to get him back where I want him, right? So I'm going for my underhook and I'm put pressure. I know that this needs to come up, right? So when I initially start, I try to block it. I'm blocking it just to get my knee above it. From here, I'm reaching, flatten. You can notice, guys, I'm moving my hips too. I'm not trying to stay here and just, you know, stretch up to it. I'm moving my hips. Come back up. One, two. One here. Now I'm my pressure. He's looking the way he can't face into me. He tries to relieve that pressure. And there's my knee. So all I want you guys to do, he's on top. When he gets to our position, he's going to reestablish. He's going to flatten me out. He's going to get that control. As I start moving, he's just going to get his knee above my hips. That's it. Okay? So what I want you guys to do from the top position is try and get that control position first before you're down the bottom. It's not, I don't want you guys rolling, okay? So they'll get to the position and start fighting, fighting, fighting. I want the guy on top to... No, he's doing it right. So it's just turn it down. Take that one. So I'm here. I'll establish my underhook. Flatten him out. Control the head. Control the head. Move roll. Okay. So I want you guys to do that in a slow position where you know you have control. Guy in the bottom, don't fight the control. Okay? You're just learning this. When you know it, like the control. But um, for now, let the guy on top get that control, get to that position, and see if you can control it and move a little bit, and then we'll see where we go from there, okay? Does everybody understand what I'm trying to get you guys to do? I know I'm talking a little weird here, but you guys all understand me? Yes, sir. Okay, let's try it. I don't clap. <laughs> Now, as I drive forward, if I'm not careful, I'm swing in. As I drive forward, I'm going to end up at the very least in a half butterfly. Okay? So, um, two ways to handle it. One is if I feel it right away, I drop this leg, this hand, to his knee real quick, and I just push my leg over. If I have to drop the hand. Okay, can, can everybody see what I'm doing here? You guys all, all catch up? Okay? If, if not, I'll just drive my knee forward. So I'm almost like using my knee to kick him in the hip, okay? So he, he got his underhook up, so I'll go one, two, and drop, okay? Always make sure you're aware of this knee, because if not, you're either end up in the guard. Um, worst case scenario, you end up in someone's full guard. Now you have to deal with all that nonsense, right? Um, or, or a half butterfly, right? So always be aware of where this knee is. 
So as I establish my underhood, a lot of times I'll keep these on low, just so I can feel it. Just get my leg just above it. And now I'm driving forward, I'm pulling down. Second question, uh, second thing that came up. How much pressure, the question is asked, how much pressure am I using with my shoulder? Okay? <laughs> he laughs. Um, a lot. And what makes the difference is, uh, if I try and do this from here, I'm on my knees, like in, in the typical position I would be in for, for the top of half guard. If I'm here and I try and open them up and put pressure on it, I can't. Right? So what I'm doing is, I'm switching this in. You guys don't see that, right? Okay, that brings me from here to the point where my shoulder is violent jawline. Okay? And that gives me control without losing um, without losing stability, without losing my base. Okay? And it's important that I don't just try and come up with it. Or just keep it low as I switch down. I gotta sprawl it out because that gives me a good base. If I stay low with it, I'm susceptible to just getting swept right over. If he just blocks it because I'm trapped with my own arm. Now the roll's just reversed on me. Okay? So, back up. Be aware of the knee. Okay? Don't reach for this arm from this position, because he's just, as you're reaching for this, he's just going to take it back. You could do that too, but I would just take it back, right? So, I need to be aware of that. So, I establish my underhook, block the knee, get my knee above his knee. Now I drive forward and come back. I take my hook, shift my hips. He starts moving, my pass becomes easy. Okay? As you're doing the pass two, pressure on the jawline will get more intense, which as we move forward, maybe we'll get to that. Okay? So try it again, guys. No clap. <laughs> here. From here, I should never let him sit up that high in the first place, right? So he starts to do that. What am I doing while all that's happening, right? Okay, so we're going to actually move backwards to address not letting him get to this point to begin with, okay? So however you got the half guard, let's, let's say we're here, we're scrambling, he gets me, he pulls half guard. From here, I immediately need to start dropping, right? Because I don't want him I'm low on him right now. I know he's going to like try and start pushing and hipping and, and moving. And what would you do from here? Okay, so, so what, I, what I need to do at that point is I need to address his inside arm, right? A uh, couple ways I like to do that. One is just to lift and get my knee below it, okay, which sometimes is easy, sometimes is not, depending on if you have a strong guy and he's, his hip movement is good, because the further he moves away, the harder it's going to be for him, and then eventually this knee is just going to slide right in, and now I'm in a whole different position, right? Um, the second thing I like to do, let's just move this way a little bit. Okay, second thing I need to do is we got into our scramble, we got to this point, I like to find his wrist, okay? With my thumb to, to his thumb, okay? I'm not grabbing it this way. And, and it makes a difference, and you'll see why once you start doing it, okay? Um, I like to find his thumb, and go thumb to thumb with it, pin his arm at like a 45 degree angle above his head, okay? So from here, if he takes his underhook, take my back, take my back. Okay, really hard for him to accomplish anything once I get this control, okay? And once again, what's he doing? He's moving, he's moving his legs, okay? And I need to be aware when I do that pass because he's got that underhook, you guys all know that, right? If you don't, we'll address that as well. Okay? If I just stay low with this and I pass through and he has an underhook, he's just going to, once again, go to my back. So I need to be aware of that and I need to address that immediately. Okay? So this control position is, why not this way a little bit? It's like ice skating on that. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay? So we got here, we scrambled. I didn't let him get really high because the, the higher I let him get, the more work I have to do to get control in this situation. And, and I don't want to work that hard because I told you guys in the beginning I'm pretty lazy, right? So 
As soon as we get to this position, his, his hands are going to go to my hip, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet his wrist, okay? Thumb to thumb. Then out. And if I can get this underhook, get it. If he's got the underhook, that's fine. I'll work to establish here, okay? And I need to control it. Now my partner's going to try and hip out and take my back. Okay? If he's getting control, if, he, if it's working for him, I'm doing something wrong. Now, his smart move would be to bring his knee back inside. Try and go back to this position here, okay? Which I need to be aware of as well. So, I got this control. He's going to try and hip out a couple times. He's going to try and bring his knee in. Okay, you see what I just did? Turn back all the way around. Oh. I got control. He gets his arm in and starts trying to hip out. I got my control. I know his next move is to bring his knee in. And I need to make sure my knee comes up. Okay? I don't want to necessarily start in this position because I'm a little bit off balance. I like to start with my good base. But I know once he starts moving, he's going to do that, right? So that's when my knee comes up. And that's when I'll start my switch. That's what I'm going to be I know he's going to take my back if I don't. Okay? He starts going up to the position, control his hip, pin the arm out. He moves a couple times. Come through. Does that make sense, guys? I don't care about the pass part. All I care about is being able to maintain control. If you have a gate, you have a gate, guys. Come here with a gate, anyone. Okay, if the guy has a gate, he's here, he starts coming in for me, I typically grab outside the gate. I go outside the wrist and just grab it. I don't try and do like a, a cuff or a pistol grip. I just, like I'm put my hand on his wrist and grab material. And from here, I pin him off. Get your hand back, take my back, whatever. Adrian, try to move, bro. Okay. So for the gi people, you got your two options. You can control the wrist, or you can just grab the gi. If you have a weak grip, if you don't have a good gi grip, I would suggest just grabbing the wrist because the way the hand is shaped, it makes like a little, almost like a little hook for you to, to hold on to. It makes it kind of hard for him to get his hand out of that little uh, clamp, right? Um, if you have a good grip, also if you don't have a good grip, start working your grip. Okay. Um, if you have a good grip, just grab the gate. It's easy. If you have the underhook, then it gets really easy at this point because he's a, he's not going to get his arm back. And he can't go to my back. He needs to start establishing his underhook. So as he starts establishing his underhook, I'm ready through. Okay. So I want you guys to try this, and uh, we'll address questions as we go. Everybody ready? Any questions before we start? Try it, guys. If I can, I know he's going to try and go on my back, right? So before he gets a chance to do that, if I can bring this arm with me, I want to bring it. I'm just turning it into him. Now, from here, I can just establish or whatever. Okay? Um, there's lots of different ways you can handle that. But that's the initial, initial thing. I don't, I don't want him on my back, so I'm turning him. Okay? If he gets a beat on me, I'm just, I'm just moving away from him. Okay? If he gets that beat on me. I'm trying not to let that happen, but if it does happen, just don't let him on your back. Just you, now you react to that. You hopefully, end up in like maybe a neutral position. Okay. So the minute you're in this position here, I'm gonna try and start turning in right away. So it would be from here, I popped out with one two. Okay. So now, so now I got a solid base. Uh, he's he's in a position where he can start working too. I don't really have much control. I'll try and shoot through. You come through with my. Uh, my typical side control start position. That makes any sense. Um, I was going to address a question over here. Uh, stay here. Okay. If this arm, you have a hard time getting it out. Uh, let's turn this one. So if he has this arm bent and he's strong with it and he's resisting to get this out, I can't get it out. How do I address that? I don't. I just, I don't. I'll keep, I'll keep control of it, 
I'll start establishing this again. I'll keep pressure here to make him keep resisting me. And what happened through this whole thing was he kind of forgot about his legs, right? So as we're here, I'm, flat, you know, I'm trying to get it out. I'm trying to get it out. It's not happening. I usually take this hand, my hand moves back. I just put it on his hip. And I pop up. And I, do, I start to do my pass from there. And once again, turn in. So a, a, lot of, a lot of everything that we've done so far today takes his mindset away from his legs. Okay? And once he gets his mindset away from his legs, he's not really so much worried about my legs at this point. Because he's worried about like defending what he thinks is going on up here. And all I'm trying to do is establish a position. I'm not attacking him in any way where he's in like a really dangerous position for, for submission. Okay? He's just in a position to end up in uh, a bad position that he has to not defend and get out of. Does that make sense so far? Uh, so as we're here, we start, he sets his own hook, right? So uh, which one did you want to the, the initial one? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that inside now. So if we get if we get to this point and he's the uh, premise on there, and I'm going for my for his wrist and he's got a bend, okay, I can't get it. I'm gonna keep pressure here and make him keep, think I'm keep I'm trying for this. And I'm gonna start maybe trying to do this and he's gonna be moving. And then he moves, I'm cutting my knee right here. Okay? Don't pause in this position to this video. Okay? Go through. Now if he grabs my foot, okay, it's enough uh with your legs. If you got that guy who squeezes your legs with his foot, yeah, let's, uh, let's spread out so it's even easier. Okay. Let's turn around. Okay, so a lot of times you do this cut pass, so I'll go right to it. And they get to this position, the guy grabs your foot, like they hold your foot like they think that's gonna make a difference, right? How do you address that? I don't, okay? What I do is I forget about my foot for a second, I address up top. I start worrying about this stuff, okay? Keep my foot, hold it real tight. Got my foot pretty tight, right? The minute I went through his face, my foot came right out. See that? He's got my foot. And here I can't get it out. The minute I cross face, my foot is coming out. Okay? Same thing goes if I shoot for the mouth. If I pin, if I pin through this way. A lot of times guys hold that foot. That's the mouth. I'm really sure if he's my foot this way. Okay? So the way I address it is I don't ignore it. I start attacking up here, and as I start my attack and he starts defending them, usually my foot slides out from the knee. Okay? Um, don't like, you use distractions to get lots of things in Jiu Jitsu, right? Go for one thing and try and set up something else. Um, I do it with scissor sweeps all the time. I'll start going for a scissor sweep. I don't really want scissor sweep, but I go with beats what I can get from that initial setup to what someone's going to do to defend it, right? So it's the same thing here. He's got my foot. Big deal. I'm, I'm sitting on top of him. Okay? Start attacking. Trying to get him on. Trying to go for deep field. Whatever it is you like to do from your mount position. And eventually, as he's worrying about this, this is going to loosen up enough like he's driving him down. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that make sense to you? You know what I'm talking about. Okay? So, um, I want you guys to add a little resistance to it now. Okay? Come back in. So, what I want you to do is the guy in the bottom. I want you to have a little resistance. It's a little of the game, okay? If the guy puts a shield on, you just like lace it and scroll back. I walk through the way and start working around it. Okay, it's as easy as that, even though it isn't always that easy, but it is that easy. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, so I want you to go to this position right here, right? So from this position, um, just, there right, go. A little, little resistance. Don't, don't be like, don't turn it into a rolling match. But a little resistance is just like let the guy work, let your top guy work and get what he wants. Okay? Um, you can do anything you want, okay? If the guy comes up for the underhook, I want to start working this way and get that, top, that control position that we were just working, that's fine. Um, if you want to, he gets his underhook and start setting this up, that's fine. Okay. Um, the couple things we did, I just want you to practice them with just a little bit of resistance. And a little bit. Just don't don't start rolling. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Everybody comfortable with that? What? I can't hear you. Isn't that half butterfly there for the guy on the bottom? The, yeah, the guy in the bottom. I I, I kind of said that earlier. If I need to be aware, right, that. If I'm playing this game, it's really easy for him to just bring his knee in, okay? I need to be aware of that. 
okay? So as I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm aware of where his knee is, okay? And then sometimes I put my hand there, and sometimes I just bring my knee in, okay? So if I'm here, I got him spread out in this position. Um, I wasn't going to address the bottom part of it, but we, we will since the question came up. Okay, so the question came up. If you got this guy in this position, and I'm on the bottom, how do I get my arm back? Okay, and if the guy on top of you is stronger than you, you're never going to use it strength to get your arm back, right? So I'm up here, and even if I got my leg too tight, I'm, I'm, I'm addressing his upper body, right? If he tries to just get his upper body free using his upper body, he's going to lose more often than not, right? So what's hindering his lower body from moving? Go. That's it, man. That's it, okay? And the guy on top of you, to be aware, it's that simple, okay? All I'm doing, all he did, if you guys didn't notice it, just come this way. He's got me pinned out. All he did was that. I think he did something, but I put my name Same thing. So all I did was put a, uh, I put like a little, uh, like a wedge in place. I pushed a little bit. He's got my arm. He can't get my arm. It's not that hard for me to get my leg back, though. Okay? And even if he's got, even if he's got his leg high, he's got me out. It's not that hard to do. So, guy on top, you need to be aware. Okay? Um, and and that's, that was a perfect observation. Uh, you need to be aware of that inside knee. All he needs to do is get his knee past yours, and he's safe. Be aware of that, and make sure your knee stays above his knee. How do you do that? Be aware of where his knee is. Be aware of where your knee is. I mean, I can't give you a technique for that. That's just awareness of where you're at, right? Um, his knee's above mine, he's good. Where he needed me, he wins. My knee's above his, his I win. Okay? And that's going to change from millisecond to millisecond as we're moving. And you need to be aware of that, where that is. Okay? And if I'm here and he gets that in, he'll bring your knee in. I need to immediately let go of that and address it. Okay? Because if I stay here, he's going to pull me in. And now he's going to. He's got me broken down, and he's going to start doing whatever he's going to start doing. So the minute I, the minute I feel that I, I fucked up and that knee got high, I need to address it. So typically what I do is I come hand, hand to knee, hand to hip, and I try and pop up and through again. So that's how I typically will address that issue if that happens. Okay. So be aware of that while you guys are doing this next drill. If you feel that knee come through, you got a little lazy. You feel that knee come through. Lock it and pop your knee up, okay? And now we're right back where we started in the first place, when just getting your knee above his knee and sliding uh, with like a, a, like a slice through. Does it make sense to everybody? Uh, you wanna try it? Yeah. All right. I don't <laughs>